This, this stuff is, is really our big passion, which is the golden age of Hollywood and when movies were starting to be made. We have everything from a, a Technicolor blimp to we have cameras that go back as far as 1913. Wow. I know these are actually very rare. Some camera operators that I've spoken to talk mm -hmm. about how they have a prize piece in their collection, but I've never seen anything quite like that. Well, the, these are really remarkable cameras. I mean, here's a, here's a, a Pathé, we have Universals, we have a Prestwich, we have a Parvo. This camera is fascinating. You know, you talked about how, what is the pedigree of some of our, or the provenance of some of the props that we have. This particular camera, which is a Universal Liberty War model, they kept very good records, the camera departments of who they sold it to. And they sold this to a, a man who was a photographer in Europe at during the Spanish Civil War and at World War One, and he was a very famous photographer. So you know, you kind of think all these great movies came through this piece. Uh, interesting. And and I, I think props have a certain energy to them and a certain karma because you know when when you send the right prop out on the right show, it just kind of brings up that action and everybody just they, they get innervated by it. It's, it's just really wonderful. You know, you just made me think of something that becomes very important when someone's doing research for a script and they're thinking about not only a specific time period but a specific location right for instance if it is um, 1940s in Mississippi mm -hmm. do you have people that help the the folks that are looking for props find exactly what that piece of equipment would be that would have been used oh, not yes. only regionally mm -hmm. but time period -wise? we do that that's that's our big passion we, we love research what we like to do is give the directors options we'll show them this is right for your period and this is kind of close to what's right for your period if it's going to work better for your actors or for your actions. Some directors are interesting, you know, um, some directors like Michael Mann when he did Public Enemies, it was 1933. He wanted everything that was just brand new and perfect for 1933. You'll have other directors that are okay fudging it a little bit here and there. Right, right. Yeah, it depends on the project. When we worked with Attenborough and Chaplin, he had uh, just done Gandhi a few years before, and, and he had realized that people learn their history from films. So for Attenborough, it was very important that everything be as correct as possible because he felt a lot of people wouldn't pick up a book about Chaplin, but they would go see a movie, right. and that's how they would learn their information. Interesting. Yeah. Um, probably one of my most well-seen cameras is this one right here, huh. which is our press switch. We, we made this in 1990 for Chaplin, but this camera has also been down to Antarctica. We did a film in Antarctica called uh, about Shackleton's adventures. This has been to Mexico for, and also starring Pancho Villa. It is such a famous camera and so important to us that it has its own stunt doubles up here. Oh, wow. Yes. One of the fun things is we did the aviator and on the aviator, they're making Hell's Angels and they have these biplanes. And back when, the, when they were really making Hell's Angels on these biplanes, they mounted uh, cameras onto the wings of the planes. Well, that's all fine and good, except now those, those biplanes are worth a quarter million dollars and up. So the people that own them don't want to mount these cameras. So we had to devise plastic cameras that were lightweight that could be easily attached to the biplane wings. How much of a difference in weight does that Oh, make huge, yeah. huge, yeah. You, you know, something here that's, you know, barely any weight at all, under three pounds, to something that might be, you know, 25 pounds wow. or more. Like when Chaplin was doing The Immigrant on board a, a a rocking boat to keep your camera straight and he could use this. Wow. When we were working on The Aviator, the director, Martin Scorsese, wanted to be able to look in the back monitor and he wanted to be able to rack focus. Let's see if I can get this. And when he did, to have the image change on the back. The technology is, has changed so much, what we now do is we install lipstick cameras. Huh. So when we're racking focus, really what we're doing is we're changing the, which lipstick camera we're using at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. So we will get out these cameras and make it available so people can put their red cameras in or a three chip. How interesting. Mm -hmm.